at the Washington State Capitol in Olympia. I saw a picture on Instagram showing all the beautiful cherry blossoms. So I came down to do a painting. Morning. Good spot, huh? Yeah, beautiful. I walked around a bit and I like this view best. This is roughly the scene I'm going to paint. I'm really drawn to the light on the Capitol building there. I think that'll be a fun drawing exercise. And then of course the cherry blossoms here in the foreground, partly in shade, partly in the sun. And I think I'm going to keep a little bit of shade for a few hours here so I have a little time to, to capture some of the shadow patterns. I'm going to go with a portrait orientation, so a more vertical orientation. Pretty strong backlight in this view, so I hope the camera's picking up the image okay. I'm going to go with an 11 by 14 inch Gorilla Painter oil primed linen panel. Really nice surface to paint on. I've got my standard colors laid out. Ivory black, Rembrandt cold gray, titanium white, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, transparent oxide brown, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow, Windsor lemon, gamblin radiant lemon, and yellow ochre. I don't know if I'll need all of these, but I, I got them out and I got a generous amount out so I don't have to stop and get more. I got a generous amount of titanium white. I've got a little bit of liquid in here and I've got Gamsol. I've got Gamsol also in this cup just to wet my brush. I'm going to try something a little different on this one. In the studio recently, I tried a different approach where I pre-mixed all my colors and then I did a Gamsol wash and then I went immediately into painting the scene over that almost wet Gamsol wash and it was a lot of fun. The, the slipperiness of the paint on the panel. It was a fun way to paint. So I'm going to try that here. It's colder outside than it is in my studio, so I'm not sure how it's going to work, but well, you never know till you try. So what I'll do is I'll start to mix up the colors I see in the scene. And I'm going to try to minimize the number of colors. I'm going to try to use just a few of the specific colors to the scene and then as I paint I'll dip into more primary colors or white or gray or black to shift things around a bit. Alright I've got the colors mixed up. This is the majority of the building color especially where the Sun is hitting it and then I've got a slightly darker value more brown slightly darker value more pink now this is in the building, but it's also in the, the cherry tree blossoms. So I'm going to use this same color. I'll try to contrast this against this so that the cherry tree stands in front of the building. This is the light on the cherry trees. And then there's also a little bit of this in the cherry tree. So I'm going to have to play with using the majority of this for the cherry tree and then just adding dots of this here and there as highlights, not as the main color or else I'll lose the cherry tree against the building. I've got some dark shadow color that's really warm, a little more gray and a little more lavender for the building. And then this lavender color is also the cherry tree blossoms in the shade as well as this more blue value. So all these I can use both in the cherry tree and the building. I've got a darker, more dull, more grayed out blue for shadows of the building. And then I've got some values for the grass. This is the grass that's closer to me and the moss on the base of the tree. This is for 
the ground that's showing at the base of the tree. And this is the sun on the grass in the shade. And then I've got a little bit of a greenish gray here. There's a, a cool shrubby like ground covering closer to me that I'll, I'll dot in as well. So that's the majority of the colors. Got them all mixed up with liquid. So they should stay nice and moist for a couple hours. But beyond that, if I don't get them in a colder spot, they'll start to skin over and stiffen up. So now I'm going to take a small bristle brush and do the drawing. That's going to be the most critical part of this painting. I need to get the perspective and the drawing of the capital right. So I'm going to use my mall stick, which is actually a, a telescoping back scratcher. It's nice because it hooks over the top of the panel if I need it to. Um, and it collapses down so it, it travels easy. I'm going to use that as a straight edge with my small bristle brush and refer to the photo I took on my iPhone to help me get it all onto the panel with the right perspective. I'm just going to use burnt sienna to do the drawing. I think that'll look nice uh, peeking through if I leave some of it. After I do the drawing, then I'll go into a really light Gamsol wash. All right, there's the sketch in. Now I'll take this larger old beat up bristle brush and do the Gamsol wash. For the Gamsol wash, I'll use a little bit of ultramarine blue for the sky. I'll knock out the clouds with alizarin crimson. For the Capitol building, I'll use yellow ochre for the cherry tree, for the blossoming cherry tree I'll use alizarin crimson and then I'll go back in with a smaller brush and add back some darks for the trunk of the tree. I'll throw in a little bit of cad yellow for the grass in the foreground and burnt sienna for the undergrowth under the tree. And I'll use that, I'll use a smaller brush with some Gamsol, Gamsol to knock out the lightest lights. Hopefully the sun sticks around long enough for me to capture a convincing shadow pattern. Otherwise I have the picture on my phone as well that I can refer to if I need to. There's the Gamsol wash in and I made the, the uh, sketch too dark. I used too rich a color doing the sketch. It's not really wiping back out with Gamsol. That may be just a difference between Gamsol and turpentine. Not sure. Tell you what, it sure is nice doing the, the wash without breathing in the turpentine fumes. So that definitely is an advantage to using Gamsol even outside. I also forgot to mix a sky color. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the lavender color I mixed up for the blooms in shadow and add a touch more ultramarine blue not go too much darker and fill in some color in the sky and I'll use the lighter more grayed out value of the blooms for the the clouds in the sky and maybe 
blend a little bit of that ultramarine color as well. Now that I've got the wash done, I can put the lid back on the Gamsol so it doesn't get spilled. And I can just use the Gamsol that I have in my little cup. Now just dip in. First I'll dip my brush in a little bit of Gamsol, make sure it's nice, make sure it's nice and wet so the paint slides off easily. I'll dip into this lavender color I mixed up for the blooms in shadow, still nice and moist. And I'll add just a little bit of ultramarine blue. And see how that looks at the top of the sky. A little dark. I'm in shadow here too, so that's that's throwing it off a little bit. Add a little bit of white. And I can correct the drawing of that steeple up there. That pinnacle on the tower, on the dome, as I draw this blue sky in. Add just a little bit of swirling blue here as I move down the sky. Sun's coming from the left hand side, so the sky's going to be a little lighter on this side. I'm kind of thinking through the process here. The This side of the building is going to be lighter, so I may want the sky to be a little darker here to give some con contrast. And this building is going to be a little darker on this side, so I may want the sky a little lighter to provide some contrast. Just kind of thinking through what will make the building stand out and be believable. I'm also just looking at the scene and trying to capture what I see and what I think would look interesting. Soften these cloud edges up a little. 
I can always adjust it later in the studio too if something doesn't look right. Now I'm going to paint over the edge of the building just slightly. That way I can paint back into it and get a nice soft edge just like I would with mountains. I can always harden up the edge later back in the studio add some more definition. Because I'm painting in shadow it's making the values all look darker. I know when I get this back in the studio it's gonna lose some of the dark value and that's okay. So I'm seeing a little bit of this blue in the building shadows as well. Especially where it's not a deep shadow, just the form shadow. Not a cast shadow, but a form shadow. I'm going to alternate those shadows warm and cool for interest. And I'm not really going to use the straight edge now. I use the straight edge to get the drawing down during the initial sketch, but I don't want to use the straight edge as I'm drawing now. As I'm painting now. I want it to be a little looser than that. I want to stop with the darker colors for now and jump into the, the light of the building. I'm going to use this same brush, wash it out. With some, Actually, I'll, I'll go to a different brush. I'll keep this one in case I need to touch up the sky. This is another evergreen, rosemary evergreen. I'll damp it. Dampen it just a little bit with some Gamsol. I'm going to go in with this lightest light, lightest building light, and paint where it's where the building is brightest. I've got some nice sun on it right now. I'm not going to be able to paint all the detail that's up in here, and I don't want to. try to indicate some of the architecture though with my brush strokes. The dome is coming down in segments. Outcroppings and circular rings. And pillars. I can try to highlight some of these prominent pillars. Oh, it's chilly here in the shade. As the building goes further down, it gets a little bluer, so I'm going to add a little bit of that blue lavender color to my light here. Actually, I'll just use the sky brush. I'm going to correct the drawing of the sky here a little bit against the building. And then I'll use the same brush with some more white and a little bit of this yellow to suggest the building. This slightly bluish white will help it stand out against the
would stand out against the cherry blossoms too. About as far as I want to go with the detail on the building, just kind of suggested. I think it has a nice presence, a nice sense of atmosphere. So now I'm going to take a rosemary badger hair brush, uh, master's choice brush, and just dot in the cherry blossoms. I don't know how it's going to work, um, the light cherry blossoms against the light building. I'll give it a try. I may have to go back later once it's dry in the studio and reinforce it somehow to get it to read, but we'll see. What I want to do is keep the direction of the light in mind. It's coming from the left hand side. There's a nice purple, pink pinkish purple shadow on the bottom of the branches uh, the underside of the blossoms and there's a beautiful pink and yellow harmony to the the light on the blossoms so I'll try to capture that just by putting in abstract random strokes and then finally at the end I'll come back in and paint the dark of the trees and the dark of the grass under the trees I'm not gonna worry about painting any of those cars right now. I may add those later in the studio or not. I don't think the composition really needs the, the cars. Mm -hmm. Can you take a look? Uh-huh. Wow, so pretty. Look Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Do you want to help me? <laughs> you want to help? Do you want to help paint? <laughs> you can. I'll show you where. I'm small. Huh? I'm small. That's okay. I'll show you where to paint if you want to try it. You hold me in the paint. No? Come <laughs> on. Yep. chilly. The sun went behind the clouds and uh, yeah I got cold but good time as usual. Challenging. I do like that method of using gamsol instead of turpentine. I'm going to have to play with that some more. It did offer some challenges. The, the wash didn't come down as the wash didn't go down as easily and I couldn't clean the oil paint back off the linen as easily as I could with turpentine. The turpentine must cut the paint a little easier than Gamsol. So that slowed me down a bit. Um, but I think 
decreasing the number of colors for this composition worked out well. I'm just going to have to play with it some more to decide whether I like that method or not. I do like not breathing in the turpentine fumes. So I've got some leftover colors. I'll take those home and finish the painting back up in the studio. You can see how much the light changed as the clouds rolled in. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, please visit my website. I sell these little plain air pieces at a reasonable price because I consider them practice. It really makes me happy when someone likes my art enough that they want to hang it in their home. You can also sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date on my new work and shows and get a discount on original art and prints.